Hey guys, I thought I'd give you a good opportunity to look at one of my go-to dashboards and get a feel for some of the things that I do with my dashboard. And actually, I'm going to do a full video series on how I've actually built it from the data sources into Excel, how it comes into Power BI and everything in Power BI. Best place to start right now is just to dive right into it and see what I see. One of the difficulties I've had in demoing this is getting dummy data. It's because I don't want to, I'm not able to provide any, you know, any project specific data that I might work on. Uh, fortunately, the dashboard is is mine, so I can, I can show that. Um, so I've got a dummy data sort that I've data set that I finally finished working on and yeah this is it nice little progress curve you know we see these all the time usually just weekly monthly management reports we've got actual curves forecast curves uh, plan early plan late histogram on man hours per week this is actually set up on a weekly basis we got some key metrics for where we're at, earned forecast hours, planned hours to date, what we've actually earned to date, um, planned percent, earned percent. Hopefully the calculations on here work. So you can go check it, let me know if they're wrong. Um, what the data date is, there's actually some subtleties of actually where we get this from, which we'll talk about when we actually start building this. Some selects over the top. This is a WBS selection, so we can go right to a WBS, and there we go. So now this is the power that we actually have inside Power BI, and that if we do this in Excel, each one of these is a separate set of equations, a separate graph. Everything has to be custom to your specific filter. But here, you just put the filter on, and boom, I want to see that WBS. And so, oh, that WBS in phase five. Well, there we go. That's the curve for that WBS in that phase. Uh, this is actually set up with a three tier, um, let's say WBS structure, filtering structure. Uh, this is a phase, this is a level one, this is a level two. And inside the data is a third level for commodity code, and we'll see that in a bit. So basically, we have almost unlimited filtering to produce any graph we wanted, as well as commodity code. If I wanted to see earthworks or concrete or steel, I could click that and you'd be able to see the information as you'd see it here, but with that data sort. Some other information we've got is a details page. Here, a lot of the same information. It's actually the exact same graph the same filtering up at the top, but now here I've actually put in the commodity codes. If you actually want to see Earthworks, Concrete, S&P, e &I, Commissioning, it's, again, this is just a dummy data sort. You might have a contract that's just concrete, and maybe this doesn't make sense, but you could find another three-level filter to get that resolution into your dashboard. But down here, th these are actually schedule activities. This says area type WBS, kind of disregard, it's just level one, level two, level three of some structure that you can match into these level one, level two, level three slicers up at the top. What's nice about this is that you can actually go to a specific activity and you can see, there you go, that's actually a pretty interesting one, or not, you can see a specific progress curve down to an activity level. And this is something, you can do this in Primavera, but usually in management reports, you can't. And what's nice about that is you could, for potentially delay situations, you could select an activity and you could see where it's been worked on over a particular time. In this data set, I've actually got one that I've preloaded into it for this reason. So here's an example where we actually started working on this you know, back in January, February, and we got up to 75% complete. However, after that, you can see that there was no incremental progress done on this activity. And when you're actually looking at delay claims, it's these areas that are very useful um, you know, for, for actually EOT claims. But we can click off that and go back to everything else. Let's just go look and see some of the other pages that we have in here. 
We've got a major activity here. This is just going to your data sets and doing a filter. I've just called all the activities, activity one, two, three, four, five. Here I've done a filter to show me every activity that has 34 in it. And so it's just giving me some, some filter. Um, dates, we've got baseline date, prior date, current forecast, finish date. A variance, we've got a forecast variance here. So this is actually some date that came in earlier. Last week we said 30th of April. Now we're saying 26th of April. And we can actually see that activities is in progress and we're 50% complete. We've got some float durations in here. If it's zero or less, shows up as red. And a description, obviously in the real one, it's a bit of a longer description. Here it's just gonna put a dummy in there. Milestones, almost exactly the same it actually is the exact same page, just applying a different filter on your activities. So here you'd actually have some activity code that would tell you what your major milestones are, and you just pull them out. Same date, what's your baseline, prior week, current, variance, and if there is any float, hopefully all in all your milestones would be zero, but if you're early, yep, you would see a positive number in there. Got all activities here, same page, view just we've removed all the filters so now you're just looking at everything that might um, might show up in your schedule progress details this is a fairly interesting change let me remove everything it starts with all your activities in your schedule start date finish date you'll notice on all the other pages i don't display the start when i kind of look at variances i me personally, I like to look at finish variances, not necessarily start variances. And so usually all the all the pages that I've got, it's just baseline start, or sorry, baseline finish last week or last month or whatever your last period was and current finish dates. Um, this one is a little bit different view. This is a list of an activities that yeah, you wanna see progress on. So it's prior week progress, current week progress. I've got a filter, active activities. This shows a list of everything where between last period and this period, there's been a increase in the percent complete to either where you finished it. So in the last period, all these activities would have been finished and we can scroll down. These activities we've not finished. Maybe we started them in prior periods like that one that was started in a prior period. So it was 20% and it's increased to 50. So this gives you a good idea immediately with one click what I've been working on. And obviously if there's anything, if any of these activities are critical, they would show up as red. Um, a little bit interesting that we're not working on anything that's critical at the moment, but that might be because there's some offsite work. This is set up with a, a filter on the back end just to show just on-site construction activities. We go back to this side. One of the interesting things of how this is actually built is that we have two data sets. We've got one that is actually the schedule activities, which is the information that we see down in this view. So this is the activity dates. And then we've got another data set that's actually related to the histogram forecast um, progress information. And in the, the data, the model, we just put those two together and link them at some level. We actually link them on um, the schedule ID, you could link on some other references if you want to see it different ways, but I've just linked the schedule activity. It does cause some difficulty, but as long as you know what you're working on, it's fine. So generally, that is what I'm going to go show you guys how I've built, and I'm going to build it up from the Excel file all the way into importing the data and building every one of these views. Hopefully it's gonna take about an hour, might be a little bit more, and we'll just see how it goes. So thanks a lot guys, and look forward to doing this. Have a good day.